Hello everybody, this is Carmen Kill the Cat and welcome to your fifth C++ tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going over the string library. So the first thing about the string library, uh, as you remember we declare strings like this. So we'll say string word word1 equals hello. Oh, that's completely wrong. Hello. And a semicolon. So that's how we declare a string, just like a normal variable. Remember that from the variables tutorial. And then we'll make another string. Call it word2. And we'll just make this world. We're still just doing the generic programming example. Hello world. So now, say for some reason we want to combine these. So to do that, we make a new string. We'll call it phrase1 and set it to word1 plus word2. So this is just adding them together and we should actually have a space right here to make it work. So this just adds the two strings together so it'll say hello and then world in the same string. And we can just put a... no actually we shouldn't. So now if we want to output it we just do count and phrase one and end line so we'll build this should work yep and hello world so the next thing we have to work to learn about in the string library is the string dot size function so what this does is it or is it outputs how big the string is in the, by the number of characters. So if we do uh, phrase one dot size, so phrase one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it should output eleven. Eleven. So that just outputs how many characters are in the string. Next, let's get into indexing a string. So let's create a for loop here. For int i equals zero, semicolon, space. And we'll do i is less than phrase one dot size. So this for loop goes will loop 11 times because phrase one is 11 characters long and then semicolon i plus plus make the curly brackets and enter so now we'll do standard count and we'll write phrase phrase one and then in square brackets these are you can find the square it's uh, the lowercase version of the curly brackets because you probably don't know when to use these huh? I don't think they're used for anything else besides programming and then end line so what this is doing is this is outputting phrase one but only the character at position i so when i equals zero it will output the first position when i is one it'll output the second position and it'll go up from there up to phrase dot size so if we build this it should say hello world but on a new line for each letter so hello world the next function in the string library is called string dot find so to show this we'll create an if statement and we'll do phrase one dot find and we'll say just put hello for the parameters so what string.find does is it searches for the phrase you put into the parentheses. Uh, it searches for that in the string that you're calling dot find from. So if it does find hello, which it will because it's right here, then it will return that. And if it doesn't find it, it will return a value called string colon colon mpos, npos. And what that just means is it didn't find anything. So say not equals string string colon colon n plus. 
then we will output phrase one. So now we're only gonna output phrase one if it finds hello in it and end line. So it should find hello. So if we run this, 11, hello world, and then hello world on one line. But say we were to change the value in here to something else, just put some random characters in. Then it won't output it because obviously these characters aren't in the string. So now let's move on to the, the string.erase function. So what this function does is it erases a certain part of the string. So to call it, again, we just do phrase1.erase. And this takes two parameters. It'll take the position in the string where we want to start deleting, so the sixth character. That is the W in world, so it will delete that. And we want, we'll say we want to delete this whole wor word, so we'll delete five characters. So the next parameter is how many characters you want to delete. So six, five, and then we will just copy and paste this down here and run it, and it should only say hello. See there, hello. And we could also do this somewhere else. Start at two, delete five characters. Should work the same way. H E O R L D. So you could also just give this one parameter. You can just give it the starting position and it will delete everything after that. So just H E. Or you could give it no parameters and it will delete the whole string. So there's just an empty line there. So the final function in the string library is string.empty. And what this does is it checks to see whether or not the string you're giving it, or string you're calling it from, is empty. And if it is empty, it will return true. If it's not empty, it will return false. And if you don't know what, the, what returning something means, we'll get into that in the functions tutorial, which is either next tu tutorial or the one after that. So to call phrase string.empty, we just do if. We'll say not, and then phrase one dot empty. Oh, like that. And then we'll just output phrase one again. So copy and paste this here. So phrase one is empty right now because we erased all of it here. So if we run this, it shouldn't output. Yeah, it won't. It doesn't output phrase one again. But if we just comment that out. Then it outputs it twice, uh, one here, one here, and then one here, because phrase one is not empty. And if we just did that, then it will only output it twice, because now we're saying if phrase one is empty, then output it, and phrase one is not empty. So that's all of the functions in the string library. So that's all for this tutorial, and in the next tutorial we will be going over arrays. So see you in the next tutorial.